Back, back with Brain Trust now, Peter Suderman, Reason Magazine, Perry Bacon Jr. from The Griot, also an MSNBC contributor, and Christine Niedermeyer from Straight Scoop Politics. Let's get straight to your headlines for next week. And Peter, I'll start with you down in D.C. What say you, good sir? What's the headline? Democrats increasingly troubled by NSA surveillance. I think the report uh, in the Washington Post showing that there were more than 2,700 incidents in which the NSA broke its own guidelines, broke its, you know, violated its own privacy guidelines uh, just in one year alone is going to get uh, is going to get more press. Democrats are already reacting negatively to it. We've seen Patrick Leahy on the Senate Judiciary Committee say he's going to hold hearings. A couple of the Democrats on the House Intelligence Committee have said that this is very worrisome. Even Nancy Pelosi, who has uh, typically been supportive of the president here, has said that she's quite troubled. And then folks who are regular critics uh, like Mark Udall, like Senator Ron Wyden, have released a letter saying that this is only the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. There's still a lot we don't know. Perry, what, what are you hearing down there? I mean, is this something that is going to uh, or something that's already got the, the far left up in arms or much to do about Nothing. We're Something beyond the far points. left. The majority of the House Democrats voted to defund this program a month ago. I That's think true. you're going to have some real issues when, when the Congress gets back. There's a, been a lot of pushback. You can see the people who supported the president, Dianne Feinstein, for example, kind of pulling back as these stories come out. This is going to be a big issue. If you're looking for the Obama scandal, as the Republicans are, this is going to be a big issue. NSA. NSA. All right. Absolutely. Christine Niedermeyer, what's your headline? Uh, well, I actually picked the same one oh. that uh, he oh, did, so I'm going to change one. I'm going to say that uh, that the RNC. Well, first of all, and you're new, you're new to this, Christine, so we'll let you pass with this one. Uh, NSA internal audit is just the tip of the iceberg. Privacy violations mushroom with new leaks in the days ahead. We like for our headlines here to be shorter and more clever than that. Uh, oh, well, okay, all right, but I'll make sure to just, to get wow. that for next week. <laughs> I'm kidding. Didn't say this, Ross. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I'm, where's my bullet I, I, vest? I, I, I need the vest. I kid you. I kid you. But it sounds like you you think that this NSA scandal is not going to be something that we stop talking about a week from now or two weeks from now, which is typically the case with a lot of these, you know, Washington scandals. Uh, for two reasons. One, because things tend to dribble out over weeks. Secondly, Snowden had given some information over to the Washington Post that came in out last week. Who knows what he has planned for the coming weeks between now and wh whenever he gets back, if he ever gets back to the United States. Second, I think Congress, when they get back, if they don't deal with this and nip in the butt, I, I agree with Perry, they've got to deal with this in early September, right after they get back, because they got the budget and everything else, and it's just going to keep mushrooming and expanding, and and then the president and the Hill are going to have to deal with this for months and months and months and you months. Know, Peter Jelani Cobb of the New Yorker said something here on the broadcast yesterday that really st uh, stayed with me. We were talking about stop and frisk, and Jelani Cobb said, you know, uh, forget stop and frisk for a second. What we are seeing, or what we have seen at least over the past 12 months, has essentially been an attack on the Fourth Amendment in this country, uh, time and time again. I would imagine, Peter, that. That, that would be a, an assessment that you would agree with, no? Oh, certainly. And I think that the, the reason that we're going to see a lot of talk about these new revelations is that they go to the heart of Obama's defense of the NSA program, which he said there has been no specific uh, accusations of abuse and the oversight is very good. But in fact, what we saw here is that we, there are thousands of abuses, thousands of instances in which they violated their guidelines. And the oversight isn't very good because basically the judges who are doing the oversight just have to rely on what the government gives them. Pierre, we have not heard from the White House just yet on the latest revelations regarding the NSA. We, the president, of course, on Martha's Vineyard hasn't commented yet on that. It is going to be very interesting to see how he squares that response with what he said uh, from the White House just a week prior uh, to the NSA revelation. He's now going to update those comments from, uh, from a couple of Fridays ago because the Washington Post story, if you read it carefully, the Washington Post informed Dianne Feinstein and the head of the FISA court that the, law, that the rules were not being followed. That's You can't say something's being oversight if the media is doing it and Edward Snowden's doing it because you've been saying up to now that the, the committees yeah. and the court have. This is going to be an issue we're going to keep talking about. What's your headline? I said still marching, so the serious this week, but uh, March on Washington, known for the I Have a Dream speech, of course, but it's also was the, the march was actually formally called the March for Jobs and Freedom, and I think you should hear, we'll hear more talk about that this week, is that the problem, there's a lot of problems with racial justice in the country, there's also a lot of problems with jobs in the country. Black unemployment is still double what white unemployment is, the income and wealth gap between minorities and whites continues to grow in this country as well, and those issues I think you'll hear more from the president and also the people at the marches talking about.
about, as well as voting rights and traditional civil rights issues. 1963, we saw roughly a quarter of a million people down there uh, in Washington, D.C. We do not expect to see a crowd as large this time. Any idea how large the crowd's going to be this you year? You know, I don't actually know the answer yeah. there, Craig. I would be curious to see if it's, I assume it'll be tens of thousands, sure. but I don't expect anything like the size we saw 50 years ago. Uh, we, of course, are planning a great deal of special coverage next week in, uh, in honor of the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington. And we encourage you to, of course, uh, follow our coverage on the air. Also, follow our coverage online. Peter Suderman, Reason Magazine. A big thanks to you, Perry Bacon Jr. from The Grio, also an MSNBC contributor. And Christine Niedermeyer from Straight Scoop Politics. A big thanks to you as well.